Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. I'd just like to say there's nothing more satisfying than a, a good weld. It's been actually quite busy, so I've not been able to get the metal from the engineers. However, what we have here is a front axle from a uh, Discovery, I think, or a, a Defender, I can't remember. Um, basically, I've put this onto an engine stand, and you'll see why in a little while. Thanks to our Patreon supporters, and you should really be supporting us on Patreon because we can get more bits and show you more bits. This is a uh, diff pan from uh, Gwyn Lewis 4x4. And basically this is a very a strong diff pan to stop the vulnerability on the front axle because the diff pan gets dented, it causes problems with the crown wheel. So this one at 6mm thick is a very good modification. We need to cut off the old diff pan and we need to do some welding. Once we've done some welding we'll have to do a little bit more grinding. Gwyn Lewis 4x4 products, it's in Wales, and they sell some uh, very good off-road products. Uh, you can see here, this is the HD Weld on Diff Pan. Uh, you can get them in pairs, you can get them almost ready prepared, or DIY, which means you've actually got to do some welding on them, which makes it a little bit cheaper for you. There's also weld on diff guards, etc. Now, this is the uh, weld on a diff pan, and by the description, fits uh, series 2 and 3 Defender, Discovery 1, Discovery 2, and Range Rover Classic. So this is it in the flesh. You can see that the bung plug uh, thread has already been welded in, which is nice, and it's been uh, seam tacked in four places. And on the other side as well, it has tacks. It's a, a very thick piece of metal, or two pieces, three pieces of metal, and um, basically you're going to have to uh, whack this really hard to cause any damage. Specific instructions, it says weld up the outside first, and then weld the inside seams. This is to reduce a distortion, however I will show you now that when it's fitted to a flat surface there are actually some wide gaps in it. Now, a um, bit of a headache, but we'll find a way around this, it's not really too much of a problem at all. Okay, so yeah, I uh, had an upside down day today and I welded the inside first and then the outside, you can see that my welds here, uh, one of them was dog shit, but the rest are okay. The reason I actually welded the inside is because I'm using a, a stick welder and this will make a difference. Now let's have a look at the axle. I uh, first of all gauged the level plug um, where the level of the oil is and marked it. However, the axle was actually upside down, so I marked the top instead of the bottom levels. So um, you'll have to forgive me for this because you know, I had an upside down day today. Not that it makes any difference because a reference point is a reference point. Right, so the diff pan has to be ground off and I'm using a, a slitting disc and cutting along the welds to remove the pan and you have to do it all the way around just about. The axle, once the pan has been removed, should look something like this, which is the banjo part. Now I'm show you this is the weld and also this part here is a seam weld which you need to grind flat and basically yeah you need to cut this if you cut through the weld the pan will come off it's actually quite thin so this grinder used to be a voxel zephira until i magically changed it into a new grinder right so as always i like to do a dry run to see where i can cut and you can see that the grinder will not fit in this area so with a shielded camera you can see how i am cutting through the weld and you can feel once the weld has been cut, basically you just run it through until it's, you've got as much as you can off. To get around the uh, problem where you can't get the grinder, I've found that actually levering the pan up, okay, because it is actually thin metal, just uh, using a bit of uh, brute force, you can pull it up this way and then get a grinder in at the back side of it, like so. And uh, yeah, the cutting disc actually, if I'd have put a new one in, I could have got all the way through, but the disc was getting a bit short, wouldn't reach. So I decided to use some brute force. 
and you'll see in a minute here okay just switch the grinder off put it down and then just um, fatigue the metal until it breaks the uh, pan is only about 1.5 mil thick and uh, basically it is quite weak um, it's weak and nylon as you can see here so there you go a bit of chimpanzee force and it's off so the uh, crown wheel has a slot in the banjo and what we need to do is to make sure that the uh, new diff pan is not going to hinder the crown wheel whatsoever and this is actually quite vital so we'll be having to fit the diff but I'm just going to show you this uh, while we've uh, got it in such a state um, yeah okay so you have the slot and the diff pan has to make sure that it doesn't hinder the crown wheel in any way at all so we're not going to weld it straight to the casing um, however we're going to weld it up uh, on the seams first and then get back to offering it up and making sure it's right bottom level or where the oil level would be I've marked it out and it does seem to fall in the right place I've marked it out properly this time uh, basically you have to mark it out and then grind out and take the seam out as well so we can uh, weld this pan on but we won't be doing that just yet um, basically yeah you just use a grinding disc and level it flat and uh, first of all I just uh, what I will be doing is attacking it onto the axle after I've welded the inside of it and uh, basically I'm um, using uh, stick welding here obviously you know that I uh, like the stick especially on thicker metals and I'll explain why uh, a bit later on but you can see here how I'm welding it I'm using a, a flat position and uh, this will be a butt weld just remember the positions if you've been watching our videos the stick I'm using is 3.25 and the amperage is about 100 amps uh, I don't know if you're surprised at that but actually that's a little bit too hot and I'll just take it up there it's actually on AC uh, AC positive electro positive now that's the MIG weld and this is my weld here okay and it's only a little bit fatter than the MIG welding that was done on the, the inside by uh, Gwyn Lewis now you can see the heat affected area is completely different between the MIG and uh, the manual metal arc welding mine is much hotter um, basically there's a lot more penetration with stick welding and this is what we want um, preferably with the uh, thicker steels you want to be using uh, a stick welder and a domestic stick welder will do this easily at 100 amps perhaps even 90 or 95 with a 3.25 uh, rod anyway um, you can see how much it has penetrated through and there will be a slag in the grooves here and you'll I'll just show you this you'll need to grind them out now you can see why i welded the inside first to the outside so i'm uh, using um actually i'm using the cut disc here first of all and that will clean out the slag the worst thing you can have is slag underneath your weld 6013 rod 3.2 millimeters it will fit in that gap quite well and this is also a filler rod and I can also make it a bit uh, higher if I change the rod angle so downhill welding is actually a pain especially with stick welding because it changes the characteristics as you go downhill or even uphill this is why I've put it on the uh, engine stand so you can actually turn it and see that you can weld in the flat position which is the easiest to do and of course you can get very superior welds doing it this way without having to struggle it is possibly as well the most comfortable position that you can get when you're actually a welding with a stick because overhead is not nice nor is vertical or horizontal so this is what I would recommend to do if you've got the axle off the vehicle if you don't have then uh, you possibly could struggle using a grinder is a must and you can see here I'm actually cutting back where I finished a weld this could either be because I've finished one run or the stick has actually run out so uh, when you groove it out you're actually getting more penetration and your weld will be flatter you don't want to weld over somewhere and have a very high spots so you run a grinder back and then when you start your weld you run back into that groove and weld back along 
There are a few high points on this, but this is actually all going to be flattened out so you can't see the weld as a finished product. This particular power weld welder, you can hear that it's running on AC and uh, is very distinctive. If you were doing TIG, you'd get the same sound. The uh, older buzz boxes, you possibly won't hear this. Anyway, the best thing I'm doing is working from one side to another, doing a run, letting it cool down a little bit and then doing another run. And this uh, helps to stop the case from distorting too much. Okay, so this is the pair of welds. So just uh, tap the slag off and as you can see, that's actually uh, very acceptable. So what we'll do is go through the process of uh, grooving out the end of the weld again and then starting a fresh weld from where the groove starts from the end of the weld if you understand what I mean. This way we won't get any leaks. Now this is a, a series of runs of welds and you'll get this anyway with stick welding because you will always run out of electrode and have to start again and it doesn't look much at the moment but we'll uh, run a grinder and then uh, buff it afterwards but we need to now um, think about welding the uh, diff pan on to the axle so I'll be putting a diff in it next and checking to make sure it's in the right position